Well, there's a surprise inclusion in this year's budget. Trees. The government is spending $26.5 million over the next four years protecting Cody forests from PTA or dieback disease. But is it too late? Reporter Carmen Parahi headed to the Waipoa Cody Forest to find out. We're still in the dark about how to best protect threatened Cody trees. We have lost so much of our Cody tree. Uh, what we have left is 2% and that's not much. And that 2% escaped the axe and the chainsaw. Now there's a disease killing them. PTA, or Cody dieback disease, is killing Cody in Northland, the Waitakere Ranges, Great Barrier Island and the Coromandel. Every visitor to a Cody forest brings risk. Stand on the grill, brush your boot, pick it up. I will spray it for you. It's a, a soil-borne disease, moved around by people's boots. We need to scrub our boots on the way in, also on the way out. At least 250,000 visitors walk in the Waipoa forest every year. Only a few go on controlled tours. It's very, very hard to, to police this place. People can come in here any time, day or night, but they don't know the dangers of this forest when they come in here. The extent of the disease is only just coming to light. State Highway 12 runs through the Waipoa forest. Most visitors don't notice the dead Cody trees on the side of the road or deeper in the bush. This is what happens after the disease has had its way. Whether it's a, you know, a much older tree like this or whether it's a young seedling, it appears that once the disease has infected the tree, the tree's dead. Will's on the leadership team managing PTA. He admits they're struggling to contain the disease. It goes up the tree and then from there it spreads around the tree, ring barks the tree. So it's strangling the tree, suffocating it Yeah, slowly. basically. It's killing inside, it's, it's destroying all the cell, cells within the tree and so the tree can no longer transfer nutrients up and down, which is how a tree works. For the past five years, just $4 million has been spent on controlling the soil-borne disease. A damning report highlighting the program's limitations last year convinced the government to ramp up the funding to $26.5 million. But is it too late? This is an evolving program. It's not one of those things where we know everything. Only two months ago, we found that cowrie dieback was in some of the forests uh, in the Coromandel, and we need to keep nimble-footed and change our program as we get new information. Will says Cody is responsible for all life in the forest, and concentrating just on the dieback disease won't help the Waipoa ecosystem. So the loss to biodiversity because of the loss of Cody is huge. And it's what makes this disease particularly scary is because all of these other plants, animals, birds, insects have grown up around the environment that Cody provides. So it's kind of serious, it's got longer term implications. Spend time in the Waipoa and it becomes easy to see why Cody is so important. But there are flaws in the plants to try and protect it. It's bleeding gum around the bottom of it. So it's an indicator that possibly the tree's got um, Cody dieback disease. Scientists estimate PTA has killed thousands of Cody in New Zealand in the past 10 years and classified it as a serious threat. There isn't a cure yet. So this is exhibiting symptoms of Cody dieback and we just want to create a barrier between, you know, the sick tree and people's activities. Well, Zewi Te Roroa is rebuilding this old forest works camp given to them when they settled their treaty claims with the Crown in 2005. The disease is restricting their use of the land and stopping them from exercising their cultural rights in the forest restored to them through the settlement. At the time it was handed back, we didn't know that the disease was, you know, so prevalent. From the 1840s, Te Roroa lost their lands and their rights to determine what would happen in the forest. To make a living, they too exploited the Cody. Ever since the beginning of activities of, of logging and gum extraction, it's been our people that have been on the end of the spades, it's been our people that have died under the logs and pulled the other end of the saw. We've never made the decisions about how or where 
those activities should happen. But we've had to provide for our families, so we've got generations of um, being involved. Now, PTA has given Te Roro an unexpected opportunity to provide leadership in the well-being of Cody. Get as much of it off as you can. Right. And you've reduced the risk. At the moment, with our knowledge of the disease, that's as much as we can do. Will and others involved in the Cody Dimeback program have admitted, as they work to find solutions, they realise how little they know about Cody, the disease and forest ecosystem. For people that are involved in trying to stop the spread of the disease, it's a little unsettling when we don't have those answers yet because, you know, unconsciously we might be a part of the problem. So the sooner the research is done, the better. So why is the government spending millions on protecting Cody forests when we could be doing more harm than good? I can't say to you absolutely that this will provide the solution. What I can say is that resources will not limit this government's efforts to contain that disease and to ensure that Tāne Mahuta and our carry trees are therefore our makapuna. Cody dieback has been found 175 metres from the giant tree. If you extrapolate on everything that's happening, the risk is that tree could die. The Department of Conservation will spend $10 million on upgrading 100 kilometres of high-use tracks, 5 kilometres of boardwalks and 300 hygiene stations to mitigate any risk. With every person that comes in, depending on how much soil they've got in their shoes, even though there's boardwalked tracks, that soil still drops through the, the boardwalk. Will says consideration should be given to closing infected Waipoa tracks to stop the spread of PTA, similar to what the minister did when the disease was discovered in the Coromandel in March. My advice at the moment is that it would be an overreaction to close the Waipoa forest at this stage based on current information. You might say that it's important that we have improved infrastructure, and I, I do think it's important, but that activity of digging up soil, of creating the infrastructure, I'm not comfortable that we yet know enough to, to be sure that doing it isn't actually going to increase the risk. So that's why the science is so important and understanding more about the forest. Despite all the millions being spent on protecting Cody, Will believes if the infected areas are left alone, Cody may just have its own solution. I still have a lot of faith in the strength of this ecosystem to protect itself and to, it has its own mechanisms and its own, you know, sense of being where it can protect itself. It seems only time will tell if the money being spent will be enough to fully understand the true nature of the threatened ancient Cody and whether we can help save them or not. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and it changes, you know. Sometimes branches fall off or, you know, something else is, in, is happening up there. And Cody dieback could kill it. Yeah. Why should we care about this tree? I think if we care about ourselves, we should care about this tree. For all of that, it represents the opportunity to just go, damn, that's why it's so important. Look at it, it's beautiful. Well, the government's working on plans to turn the Waipua forest into a national park and is currently negotiating with Te Rorua, who want to co-govern it.